Hi, everybody. So, uh, for uh, for the comment, um, you know, I, I look at the the title of this presentation, and you know, we have a, a very short span. I'm used to the uh, the 50 minute hour long format, so we're condensing this. And, and anybody here who's got some 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 Canadian in them or near them will recognize this from a funny TV show of this hour is 22 minutes. So let's uh, let's dive into that. This is what the presentation was initially sold to you as about the smart way to make gaming pay. You know, and you know. I think I'm going to go a little Eric Clapton on this, and we're going to unplug and, and kind of do things a little differently here because uh, I, d I don't want to make gaming pay. That, 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 that sounds a little too sinister for my liking. And, uh, you know, while you want to make sure that you have enjoyable experiences and you have a lot of fun, I, I don't want to prioritize the making it pay as, as, as part of my presentation here. So I'm going, to, I'm going to start talking a little bit about why I'm here and uh, why, why I think everyone else should be here and why I think this is probably the most important room in the whole show especially today. And uh, how many of you here were, were for, for uh, Eric's thing at the very start when he had his, uh, his Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse slides to uh, let people know that uh, there's a lot of change coming in the industry and the way that people think about content and the way they think about publishing and the way they think about platforms, that's all changing. And uh, the, uh, the interesting thing is you, you need to stay in front of that innovation and uh, you, you need to be a part of it and, and you need to take a look at the new stuff that's coming up, which is why it's wonderful that that David has taken the time to put this all together. I, I, I suspect it's all for his personal edification, but uh, I, I think by association, everyone here is, is benefiting wonderfully from that. Well, like I said, I was caught <laughs> flat-footed when Facebook came along and spent two years trying to get caught back up again, and that sucks. So I don't ever want to have that happen again. Exactly. So, uh, so with that in mind, you know, this this slide here is is three ships. Does anyone take a guess as to what these three ships are? That's right. They're uh, and I don't know how they got this picture from the 1500s, but. Uh, I, I think it's very clever and very profound because uh, we're, we're looking for a brave new world. We're, we're all here on a voyage to something different and something new. And every time you've been through this, uh, anybody here who's been through building early social games? Anybody who did early mobile games? Anybody did early online games in like the 1990s? Empath Interactive, Microsoft Live Gaming, and, and beyond, you know, there's, Every time there's like a new wave of content that comes out, a new platform, something new, and the, the game experience changes at, at each particular iteration. I've been through, this is probably the, the third or fourth one by now, and there's certain patterns that emerge, certain things that you see over and over again, and if you, if you can identify those patterns and, uh, and, and get in front of them, get on top of them when they happen, and, and be one of the first 10 people to do so, uh, the success that you have will be followed by many more zeros. And, that's the only thing about, uh, about making money and making games pay that I'm going to say is that if you're, if you're in early, the people in this room are probably going to stand the, the opportunity to benefit from that the most. So, you know, of course, I work for a company and we do some stuff in TV games and as a platform evangelist, I'm here to tell you about what we're doing and how we're going to do something shiny and what we can do for you and what we can do for the industry. So, so let's get started on that. And I... I, I see we have uh, Vikas in the room who is from Trans Gaming, and I, I think we have the same TV set in our presentation, which is hilarious because this is where it all began. You know, it's people had TV sets and they, they put them in the living room, and you had another great Canadian out there who said, you know, the medium is the message, talked about how industries are changing and, and, and how things are moving forward. And, and uh, when, when you look at that, this has been a device that's been around a long time, and it's been around a long time in this format. And, and just now, this device is slowly starting to change, but it's not changing proactively, it's kind of changing reactively as a result of stuff that's happening out there. And a lot of these guys have been building screens and selling screens, and they, they came to the realization that their, their screens have been enabling a lot of other people to, to, to profit and, and grow and, and, and benefit from being the center of the entertainment experience of the household. So it's finally about time that, in addition to TV, that you have games there. And, uh, there's a lot of app downloads that are, that are happening, and there's a lot of TVs that are going out in the marketplace, and these numbers are going to get bigger and crazier, and you're going to get to the hundreds of millions and the billions, and you're going to start getting this massive hockey stick, and the industry analysts are going to talk about it. Uh, a bunch of people are going to show up. They're going to start putting content out there. Somebody's going to realize, oh my god, you know, this is going to be really big someday. And uh, then 10 people are going to realize that, which is, I think, where we are now. And then 100 people are going to realize that. And then the, the cost of customer acquisition and uh, building your business, as Eric warned and, and talked about at the, in the, at the start of the day, 
that's going to start escalating, and we're going to we're going to go into a, a customer acquisition arms race. And it's it's not necessarily pretty, but at the same time, it's very organic, very dynamic, and it's it's what lets people determine what content is interesting to to the most number of people, which is why we should probably talk about your games on TV because that's really why we're all here. Everyone's got an interesting experience, something exciting, something you want to share with people. Maybe you want to share it on the phone. Maybe you're sharing it in the browser. You should put that on the biggest and the, uh, the most, most interesting screen in the household, the, the primary screen that, uh, that you gather around and, and share with your family and you share with your friends. And, and, and to that point, right now, there's an opportunity to get in early and start putting stuff out there that is an adaptation of existing content and what's going to start happening is as you think about that, as you put your content live, you're, you're going to have an opportunity to realize that there's something different about this experience. And I'm not going to tell you what that is, not because I'm a jerk, but because I don't know. We're going to put stuff out there. You're going to, you're going to put analytics into your applications. You're going to sit behind a one-way mirror. You're going to watch kids playing with remote controls. And somebody's going to have an aha moment and realize, hey, this is what really matters to that consumer. This is how I make my content meaningful, relevant, and desirable. And, and how you get that into the marketplace. And uh, that's, that's the voyage that we're on. I don't know the name of the boat that we're all on together, but that's where it's all going. So with that in mind, I want to talk about the three M's of TV games, which is uh, sort of how you get started, your sort of one-on-one -on -one lecture, one-on-one -on -one lecture on, uh, on how to get there, where you, uh, you modify your content, you monify it, because, you know, gamification, monification. Let's harmonize our language a little bit here. Isn't monetize like the most awful sounding word? And then, and then how do you magnify it and grow your content and, and then move it forward down the, down the field? And uh, you kind of need to do it in that order. So the, the first thing you need to do is realize that the screens are big. They're really big. And uh, a lot of folks coming from smaller mediums, maybe mobile and web, want to sort of upscale that, get their things HD, get it in a, in a very high-res format. You know, the, uh, the bigger the screen, the bigger the pixels and that sort of thing and then have to take a look at the other things you have to do for inputs. Now, for those of us who were mobile 1.0, uh, this is a familiar world. Up, down, left, right, okay. Maybe cancel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a familiar pattern and sometimes have our overlapping between up and two or up and two or up and eight. It, sometimes the number pads are a little different or funny or backwards. You know, maybe you have a metric phone. Then you have also people who are out there with different controllers of different kinds, like the uh, LG wand, which when you have it, you can point it around, have a little sort of interactive experience where you're waving things like Harry Potter, as opposed to just pushing buttons and sitting on the couch. My preferred way of interacting with the TV. And then, you know, you're going to go for the trick shot. Let's put a little English on the ball. So let's get a little application, a companion app, put the controller on there, either remap it to do the same sort of thing that the remote control does, or maybe do something fancy schmancy, you know, and then you have your little pinky fingers extended for your content experience because that's going to drive the experience differently, perhaps better, more desirable than what everyone else is doing. So you got to modify your content. A lot of people doing mobile stuff right now who want to think about moving into this medium. That touch screen is going to go away for a little while, depending on how you do it and uh, how many TV sets you want to reach. And uh, uh, as that sort of evolves, maybe we'll see, you know, some of that come back. But I personally don't ever want to see any of my kids with their hands all over my television set in the middle of the living room, but who knows? Maybe gesture technology will, will, will come in in that base. And then once you've, you've done that, you want to take a look at the different ways that you, uh, you monify your content. Okay, monetize. All right, I, I tried. Maybe everyone's going to take away from this that we should change that word. That's my helpful suggestion for the day. That's the one little thing I would like to do for the industry. You can, uh, you can put billing under your TV set. You can put it in the app store. And... Uh, you can also put advertising around it. You know, how do you get your content out there so that when people are sampling it, people are used to the concept of advertising on television, and over time, maybe that will evolve and change. But for now, you know, you, you, as you take this risk, you, you need to have some kind of reward. You, you have to make some money on it. Otherwise, you know, you're just not going to be able to pay the people who make these beautiful experiences, and, and that's just a reality. You know, this is a craft. It is an art and a craft, and, you know, the craftsmen, you know, they got kids to feed and all that good stuff at home. And then, you know, you can also have in-app purchases the same way as you have on all the other platforms because that's the, the sort of the necessity of the medium at this point. All that just needs to be there. You know, you, you have to have the ability to put that out there. You have to have the ability to, uh, to make some money off of it and, and be successful and thrive. And then once you've done that, you want to take your experience everywhere. You know, get it put into the TV set, figure out how you're going to make some money off of it, and then magnify it across the, the vast sea of OEMs, partners, devices, regions, and territories. 
you know, this, this speaks to kind of the, the, do, the new model of publishing and the things that are important that Eric spoke to, and I'm going to reference that over and over again because, it, you know, his presentation really resonated, and uh, you, you, you need to start getting stuff everywhere, you know, and sadly, everyone talks about this magical, uh, invisible device. We're, we're a far way away from that. We're, we're years away from that experience, and sadly, you need the consumers to realize there's an invisible device, which means you're going to have a lot of people complaining about porting, 500 byte stacks, stuff that crashes, memory leaks, all that good and wonderful stuff. We, we got to do that to make things seamless, entertaining, pleasurable for the consumer. So, you know, maybe that does sound a little too easy and sort of, okay, let's just get everything everywhere. Let's get the content out there. I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that you need to know about TV. This is the sort of, you know, not really the abandon all hope ye who enter here type speech, but it's, it's pretty gosh darn close. Here's what you need to really know about what's happening. What's the man behind the screen doing while, uh, while you're talking to the wizard? So the first thing you need to know is that uh, the device profile and the, uh, the unified format for TV games isn't. You're going to have a wide variety of performance on, uh, on, uh, on the devices, everything from the, uh, the slowest to the, the super liminal. You know, TV sets didn't start out as devices with a lot of computing power, so some of them are, uh, are a little geriatric. Other ones are, that are coming out now and uh, have, have more capabilities will do much, much better. So when you're building your experiences, you're, you know, the, uh, the first mobile applications that were being put together, and you know, back in the day for, for Sprint, the first match three game that was ever put onto a phone ran at one frame every five seconds. That, uh, that took a little work, a little tweaking, a little optimization to get to the point where it worked everywhere seamlessly at a reasonable frame rate. <clears throat> Some of that exists on TV today. You're, you're going to find that uh, you're going to have to take a look at this stuff, tweak it, adapt it. Then you have the varied input scenario. You know, uh, arguably, you, you need to address the, the lowest common denominator format of 2468, up, down, left, right, OK. Some folks have, like I said, the magic wands, and you have other things out there. But uh, there's a lot of varied inputs, a lot of varied control schemes. You know, there's special buttons on some remotes, and maybe you want to do something fantastic for one manufacturer, but that's going to come at the cost of, 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 of sort of bifurcating your source or your build or your strategy for deployment. So you need to look at that very carefully. And it's best to go to what works, get that out there, get started, understand, and then, then maybe at that point you should say, okay, let's take a look at the different options for, for putting a, a little bit of a trick shot on this and, uh, and getting it going. And then finally, you get to the varied formats. So if you want to put a game on TV today, there's a lot of different platforms to use. Um, there's HTML5, uh, easy to spell sometimes. Uh, you have Flashlight, which is on a wide variety of TV sets in the marketplace today and uh, an, an interesting development environment to work with. And then you have um, some folks that are now deploying uh, Air and uh, other platforms that are more higher end, have some 3D capabilities, and accordingly are on much better performing devices. So when you build a game for, for TV, you know, there's wonderful little languages out there like Hacks, H-A-X-E, which have a, a, a neat way of, of, of cross-compiling into different environments that support most, if not all of those, and, uh, and other languages that you can use so that you can come up with a way to build your experience so that it supports all of these things. And uh, that's something you need to think about because, you know, as you get to the point where you're talking about hundreds of millions of TV sets, they're, uh, they're pretty evenly distributed into different size buckets of, you know, 30 million use this, 50 million use that, you know, 20 million use this. So you have to basically say, all right, for the opportunity that I'm considering and the, uh, the distribution I want to reach and the way I want to... Uh, to get success, uh, either through audience or through revenue on my application, you have to discover what the trade-offs are and, and figure out where you want to put your stuff and what format you want to use. Once you've done that, the, uh, the big challenge that's happening right now as you, you get stuff into the world of TV is uh, everybody's doing it kind of differently and uh, everyone's got a different priority for the content they want to put live. Not everyone has come to the realization that games are really, really big. Games are what people want to do. Games are what matter, and maybe they've got something else that's sitting in line in front of it. So coming to the point where you can harmonize your marketing against that is difficult. But you know that's a, that's a common challenge just about every platform. Once you've submitted it, you know sit and hope and pray and wait for that acceptance and the go live date. You know that's a challenge, and in some cases that that can take a considerable length of time because that's not streamlined. A lot of these people are figuring this out as they go. You know it's just as much a 101 for some folks on the uh, on the OEM side as it is on the on the development side. And then the, the last piece of that, which is uh, you know, sort of the challenge that a lot of people have had to go through in, in uh, building businesses in other places is you know, getting your distribution agreement in place and understanding the vagaries of what is 
or isn't acceptable to the platform? Um, can you put ads in there? Are there brands that you can and cannot use? Are there things that you need to do? Are there territories you need to support? Are there SLA requirements? And just understanding all that stuff and getting to the point where all that stuff is agreed to and understood and, uh, and mutually acceptable to both parties. Is there E&O insurance that are, that are required for getting to the platform? And do you have to have some kind of a policy where you send them a certificate? Or what happens if your building catches on fire and your servers are unavailable? Is somebody from the TV set manufacturer gonna come have a little conversation with you, right? And so uh, to sort of wrap that all up, that's, uh, that's what PlayJam has, has chosen to, uh, to get involved with. And one of the things that we're trying to do is, is help people get through these challenges, get through this stuff. And uh, you know, that's one of the goals is to help make this experience better for the, the industry and for the consumer. And uh, if people have any questions, uh, you can contact me. And uh, we're definitely interested in help getting your content available to the mass market of TV set viewers. Thank you very much, John. I... In the spirit of emerging trends, you talked, a lot, you talked a lot about how much the TV games business kind of sucks today, right? Mm -hmm. With varied deployments and 97 different controllers that all suck. And um, if you were to look at, if you were to sort of take uh, a step forward and, and look at the next year or the two, next two years, what do you see happening in the, in either inside or outside the game industry that is going to fix some of those problems and make this an actually interesting business in the future? Well, some of the, the early stuff has just literally happened. So um, if you take a look at some of the stuff that, uh, that Vicus has done and some of the games that they've put live and some of the games that, that PlayJam has, has now put live, uh, the, the adoption on the consumer front is growing. There's games that have just been put live that have achieved 10x growth week over week. It's going up by orders of magnitude of the number of consumers playing. And the consumer demand and the consumer interest and the, the desire of people to, to play games and to engage with content, as that gets trickled in from the developer to the platform, to the handset manufacturer, sorry, to the, to the TV set manufacturer. See how, that's how old and scarred I am about mobile. Don't ask me about that. But as, uh, as that gets communicated up and in, a lot of these people are gonna realize this is something that people really, really want. And um, um, much to, to the lament of uh, the esteemed Eric Goldberg in the back, because 100% of all gamers are statistics, um, they're, they're gonna need to see these numbers. And they're gonna understand that people really want this stuff and they're gonna have numbers to back it up. They can come and say, hey, listen, um, we need to spend more on our hardware because we can put $50 worth of junk inside of a TV set to make the game perform better that's gonna prevent somebody from buying a $99 to $200 console that's going to get them the, the, uh, the tail end revenue stream that we could otherwise participate in. And it's gonna go do a business, uh, start to a business conversation internally for them to say, listen, we need to invest in making this platform real. And then the exciting thing that's going to happen there is the, is the same thing that, uh, that happens in every platform is that you're going to have the, uh, the platform defining experience. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this because it's also something that Vic has talked about. Uh, every platform, when you think about it, has a game. And that game sells the platform. And if you look at the, the history of content and the best performing titles year over year over the lifetime of the, of the title, you have stuff like Halo, which is the platform defining experience for the Xbox. That's why they were bought as an Apple developer into Microsoft to make that game. You know, you have Mario on the Nintendo platform as the platform defining experience. You have Myst, which was the platform defining experience for the CD-ROM. You know, I bought Myst. I bought a CD-ROM so that I could buy Myst, and I didn't finish it. You know, that's 80% of the people I know. You buy it because it's desirable, it's something that you want, and it defines the platform. Sound Blaster 16, Wing Commander. There's always content that pushes the envelope, does something different, makes it desirable to the consumer to go out, buy it, get it, enjoy it. And uh, what we're doing here is we're, we're hunting for that experience. And uh, that's, that's something that you do collectively as, a, as an industry. Yeah, I know, that's kind of a pretty big idea. I'm uh, excited. Uh yeah, on that theme, it seems like the non-standardized TV environment kind of resembles the pre-iPhone cell phone environment. Yeah, it does. So talk a little bit about that. Do you see a similar kind of, I mean, I know you can't predict mm -hmm. the future, but go. Yep. So like sucky uh, hardware, sucky Yeah, game, exactly. Sucky and controller. you know what? People, people learned a lot in, uh, in Mobile 1.0. People discovered a lot of interesting things. They, they made a lot of 
sort of interesting technology, they, they discovered consumer trends, and there's, there's sort of interesting parallels and, and patterns that emerge. You know, it's, uh, one of the things that you wanna do is when you're building a, a content pipeline is you have to make sure that you have platform, or so you have to have a content synergy in, in what you put out there, and it's really funny. There were times when you could go and look at the deck on a carrier, and you could go down to like the, the value games aisle at Walgreens, and you would see the same sort of thing emerging. You've got a, a, a branded board game, you have a checkers game, you have a solitaire game, a deck of cards, some dice, you know, and, and uh, some pretty similar things, you know, and so what we're gonna do is, people are gonna put that in there, you're gonna get the staples in place, you got, you got the bread and the butter in the, in the grocery store, and then you need to find out what's the, uh, the, the unique Whole Foods twist or what's the, uh, the special thing that you put in the, the fancy deli over at the side that, that gets the, the high-end customers that come in for the, for the, 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 the serious experience. I, I avoided talking too much about the, the pain of 64 kilobyte builds and all that nonsense because it's, it's, it's another iteration. You know, the, there's a lot of weird stuff happening in browsers around HTML5 and JavaScript. I mean, if you take a look at it in all the different browsers that are available, and I've done some playing around with this and from a technology side with some friends, the performance, the, the variance is, is staggering, you know, and you're gonna see a lot more standardization on, uh, on libraries for running that faster and better, and it's, it's gonna iterate. So you're gonna start with stuff that's a little slow and kludgy, some brokenness. There were handsets that launched a long time ago that the HTTP stack didn't work in a handset that was gonna be out at Christmas. So people had to write uh, at a socket level an entire HTTP layer to make all their games work in time for you know somebody to get it at Christmas. And the same thing's gonna happen. It's you know the you have the release cycle. Hardware is you know cyclical around the holidays. People want to get that stuff out. People are gonna have to make some changes, and it's, it's gonna be a struggle. But it's uh, at the end of the day, the the rewards are there for the people willing to put in the effort. You talk about. Um, games defining platforms. What sort of games do you see emerging on smart TV platforms? You know, the, the interesting thing is I, I honestly couldn't tell you right now. You know, it's, uh, I, I have a theory and I'll, I'm happy to share that, and, uh, but at the same time, we're not gonna really know until it shows up, right? It's, a, this is like a Heisenberg thing. You know, you can know how fast it's going or where it's going, but not both. So the, there's a unique selling proposition to the TV set in that it's the center of the living room and it's a lean back experience and you're, you're away from it and you can share the input mechanism in a way that you can't on other platforms and I think that might be what's going to differentiate it. You know, the, the Hasbro stuff is probably very exciting for TV because when you're playing a board game, people take turns and you know, you, you pass the dice around, the remote control is the new dice. You know, there's going to be an interesting set of experiences that come out that involve a group of people together having a truly right there social experience where you can pass the control mechanism around and everybody shares the same display. I, I think that's probably going to be a start of it, but uh, you know, you un until the consumer demand is there and people get to the point where they're comfortable taking that risk, uh, it's unclear what the, the shape of the platform defining experience for TV will be, but gosh darn, it's gonna be fun to find out. I would suspect that you, um you talk to the OEMs quite a bit. Um, can you share, in your opinion, of the hardware manufacturers who are kind of, uh, who are out there looking at the potential for games on the hardware, mm -hmm. which, which one is the most bullish on games as an interesting market? That's, that's tough because they're, they're all coming towards it from different angles and they all have a different strategy. So everybody's moving forward, but they're, they're all doing it so differently that it, it's tough to say that one of them is doing it best or hardest. There's no clear best experience yet, you know? It's, 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 it's tough to answer that question because everybody's trying to do something completely different, you know? LG has their wand, some folks are partnering with different technology choices, and we don't know which one's going to emerge as the dominant winner in the, in the next little while, but uh, they're, they, they all have a reason for why they're doing it, and. Uh, you know, they, they all know it's gonna take a while, and you know, they're, they're set in for the long haul because they, uh, they, they need to, to, to win this game, otherwise, you know, that, that it's just a diminishing margins business. I think we have time for one more question, if there is one. All right, thank you, John. Sweet. Look forward to hear from everybody. Thank you very much for your time. So, we're gonna roll next into lunch, and there is a panel discussion that's gonna happen over lunch.